Hello! Welcome to the video What's on the walls in my dining room? And I hope you will enjoy it. Where do we start? Not with the cat, but there is a cat. Hello cat! Okay, I would say let's start here. We have a nice <laughs> chocolate from uh, Donald Trump that I bought at an airport in, of course, in America. I thought it would be funny and some people really think it's funny, yeah. Okay, uh, let's start here. Axis, Lady and the B-side is Messiah, uh, a really great new wave of British heavy metal single, which I think was on a sub-label from Neat Records called Metal Mind, but I can be wrong here, I need to check that out again. But as you can see, it's in a Bilderrahmen. I don't know the word for that. Oh, a picture frame, a picture frame. Okay, what do we have here? Except of myself in the mirror thing here. Oh yeah, that looks better. That's a 7-inch picture disc from Saxon. Power and the Glory is the album and I think it's also the song of it. I need to check out the B-side of that. Uh, secretly, this is my favorite album of uh, Saxon. Uh, even I enjoy, of course, uh, Strong Arm of the Law and Wheels of Steel and uh, yeah, at least 50% of the first one. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one, I really love that and it makes sense to be on the wall here for me. Then we have, a, oh god damn, I'm not too proud of that, but uh, yeah, I was a guest at the Manoa show once and this was the past when we were on tour, a we, with we, I mean the band Trance, with Udo Dirk Schneider, we were a support act on this tour. Then we have here the Sirith Angol cassette box set called The Legacy that was on uh, Metal Blade Records which I really think is a cool thing. You have all the albums and I think in live extra cassette. But to be honest, uh, I checked out only one cassette to have an impression of the sound before I wrote a review and I left the others closed. So we have a drumstick here, Noidy. What, what, what does it say? Uh, what? The best? Ah, that's from Rick Fisher. <laughs> Or, let's see, of course, it's Rick Fisher uh, from Manila Road, the first drummer of Manila Road. Tunoidi, the best drummer ever. Okay, okay, that's not true, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, next we have here a, a heavy load, 7-inch, called Take Me Away, I think Freeze on the backside, uh, which of course is really cool and uh, yeah, I enjoy heavy load a lot. Uh, yeah, who is not doing that? Okay, another weird thing is that uh, Mechanics from UFO, we have another 7-inch picture disc here, is uh, one of my favorite UFO albums. Maybe because it was uh, one of the first I ever got and when you, when you get a thing like that when you're 11 or 12 years old, you fell in love with it and uh, then it, it, it will never go away. But still, I think this album is brilliant. It's, it's really heavy here and there and the production is amazing. Amazing drums out on that album. And I don't miss Michael Schenker here too much. Uh, yeah, that's what I can say about that. What do we have here? What do we have here? Samson, are you ready? Yeah, of course, this was Samson with the... Uh, Nicky Moore lineup, uh, the bluesy guy, uh, who later uh, f showed up in a band called Mammoth, uh, with uh, the bass player from from early days of Samson, Mr. McCoy, and I really love both albums with uh, on uh, Polydor it was. Uh, from Samson. Uh, it's hard for me to say if I like the older ones more. Or, I think. It's too different to say uh, I like the Bruce Dickinson albums more than that because the music changed, uh, the whole production changed and I really enjoy Samson with Nicky Moore a lot and I'm a huge fan of his vocals, of course. So, next one in the... In the wow, this is really not easy to get that here. That's a Dark Angel shape disc on Ironworks, Ironworks Asra records. 
uh, you know this weird company that uh, <laughs> did a ton of stuff like that uh, I don't know how they did that sometimes it's just uh, 10 copies and five copies and uh, makes not much too much sense but I guess this guy uh, uh, Richard I think was his name Richards uh, he enjoyed doing that uh, here we have another one this is from Jack Panzer uh, yeah, that's the Jack Panzer one. It's uh, hard to get. It's a little up here, and I hope the camera is doing that. That's uh, Death Row, so a really old one from even before I think uh, Ample Destruction, and it's just an odd shape, seven seven inch. It would be a seven inch if it would be not. A shape disc. Then we have two Creedence Clearwater Revival 7 inches, nothing too special, maybe for us Europeans this version, uh, but uh, yeah they look good in here. <laughs> yeah this is a original Manila Road bumper sticker which you will see in the next uh, CD that's coming, uh, the roadkill tapes and rarities because I did a scan of that thing. Uh, that's really old. Thanks to Phil for bringing this over to me and Brian. Uh, yeah, it's got a nice place here. <laughs> okay, we go back to Samson again. Here's another one. I think that's a live one. Another picture, seven inch, also with Nicky Moore on vocals. And uh, yeah, a Motorhead, seven inch picture disc. Uh, to be honest, I have no clue what is on that right now, because that's on, on my wall since many years now. Then we have Not Dead Yet, which is for, of course from Hyrex, and I think it's mostly uh, the first album and the first EP combined or something like that. And it, of course it, on this side we have the cover from Raging Violence. I never understood that cover. It's, is it a potato? Or what? Uh, Pushhead did that. Uh, and I think even Caden has no real clue what it means, but uh, it was it is impressive this picture and uh, It scared the shit out of me when I was a kid <laughs> and uh, Yeah, even uh, it's not perfectly played. I still love that album. It's so raw. It's it's so fast It's still unbelievable This VIP pass is I think from UFO if I'm right I need need to think about that and what do we have here? I can't remember what that is. Okay, then we have a Saxon album that I don't like, but the funny story is that I was really in love with that girl on the album when I was a teenager, because she is beautiful, she has a beautiful face, but still I can't say anything good about the album itself. Then we have a Doro backstage pass. This was from Speyer, Speyer Germany. I think we did an interview with her there. Here we have a 7 inch from The Handsome Beasts. Uh, you remember the album Bestiality with the guy, the big guy, the singer called Flabby, uh, was posing next to a pig and there was this sign, don't feed the animals. But you can see that even their 7 inches uh, yeah, were explicit, I think you would call that. It was always something not too serious and funny thing is that this new wave British heavy metal band uh, really has some good blue songs. You need to check that out. Yeah, oh, here it is. I, it, it took me a while to get that original. That's maybe one of the newest things here in this dining room. The Kiss of Death and Heads Will Roll 7-inch single by Satan, hand glued by the guys <laughs> themselves. Uh, they once told me that, that so at least every super glue <laughs> that keeps the cover together was uh, made by the band. Then we have a trans or a photo, uh, yeah, the recent lineup, me in the Kiss Unmasked shirt, which is maybe not the best idea. <laughs> okay, Vika, you all know this EP. Uh, it's a weird story. I found that in Mark Shelton's uh, collection in his basement and I was doing the usual noises when I see something rare. Yeah, yeah. now I sound like shark. <laughs> That's funny. And he told me, hey, you can have it. 
you can have it. And, and I told him, hey, it's it's really rare. And they, oh, I don't need that. The band sent it to me because they wanted to play some gigs with us. Oh, I don't think I like it. So just take it. And I took it with me to Germany. Even I told him twice or three times that it's worth a lot, but he didn't care. He was happy that I was happy. And so I got this Vika LP. Let's see how much, how long the battery lasts when we go on like that, because there's a lot more. Yeah, here is Nantucket Sleigh Ride from Quartz, which of course is a cover version of uh, Mountain. And uh, yeah, not just that it's signed by all the band members when they were still alive, it's also a white 7 inch. I have a black one in my collection and this white one is here on the wall. And yeah, the, yeah I'm really happy about that. And uh, yeah, now here we have Yuma, which is a German rarity and in fact a local band from where I grew up in Frankenthal, Germany. So these guys were just 20 minutes away from me, maybe half an hour. Uh, it's really cool hard rock. It's 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 a fun fun seven inch and these guys gave it to me because I told them hey I don't have it anymore. I had it when I was a kid but it got lost and they signed it for me which is really cool. Here's a witch cross box set. I think it was on Hell's Headbangers or something. Uh, it was yeah one of the first re reissues before now High Roller did that great remastered version of this album but here is uh, a lot of stuff in it demos and seven inch the seven inch single the album and uh, yeah like i said a lot of stuff okay there's a, s a drumstick from ian pace but it's not when i met him so yeah a year ago uh, somebody gave it just to me he bought it for me or something on the show i i can't remember well and we have two, how do you call that, eight inch tracks or eight track tapes or yeah, what you had in the early 70s. Uh, this is Creedence, Clearwater Revival and The Beatles. Uh, it's obscure for at least for us here in, in, in Europe because I think it was never a big thing here. And uh, in America I bought each for one dollar or so and I should have taken more but unfortunately there was no kiss. <laughs> Yeah, we, here we have New Electric Warriors, a new wave bridge heavy metal compilation. Most famous track might be from Vardis, If I Were King. Um, I really love that cover because it makes absolutely no sense to me. You drive with a really ugly motorcycle to, into the fields somewhere in England you, and you have a guitar on your back, but three headbangers with helmets on stand there in the fields headbanging. How did they get there when there's just one motorcycle? Thinking about that alone is funny, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff on that. Uh, that you need to check that out. It's not. I think it's not too expensive. Maybe maybe fifty or sixty dollars or something right now. You can't say that about these uh, Venom-shaped discs. Of course, everything from Venom, which is original from back in the days, is worth a lot. And uh, believe it or not, uh, I got this for free, I think from a Manila Road fan. Uh, I'm really happy about that. This was incredible. And now they are here in the dining room. Here we have a Hyrex 7 inch, nothing too old. Uh, what is it? Yeah, you can see it now. But still, I think it looks cool and it should be here. Then here we have four Rush box sets. These were the first three that came uh, that were released at the same time really fucking cool uh, starting from the first album then of course goes on you can see how the logos change and then uh, the Warner Music uh, put out this one with the more new stuff so all in all you have most of Rush in here oh I forgot the drumstick <laughs> you see that huge monster here in this nice little bottle that's from Randy Fox and here we have Mickey D from the Scorpions or X Motorhead. And again, I didn't meet this guy. Someone bought it for me, uh, to, uh, for me and give it, gave it to me for free. <laughs> Still a cool thing. Even I would prefer if there would be Motorhead on it. 
Okay, I don't need to say much about Trespass. Uh, for some weird reasons I have three copies of that one. Uh, I have all the seven inches from Trespass because I really love their music. But uh, I saw this one really cheap on two occasions and I thought, okay, before anybody else is buying it, I can use maybe more than one copy. <laughs> okay, and then we have two more uh, seven inch picture discs. Uh, this time it's the Tigers of Pantang, as you can clearly see. Uh, I have the, the regular singles uh, in my collection. These are just the picture discs. So though we have a window here. Here's my, here's the grass for the cats. <laughs> Here's my little bandana sunglass uh, holder, so I know where my stuff is. And of course, healthy food. Yeah, you can't believe it, huh? Oh yeah, I need to grab a package, uh, a parcel at the post office. I hope it's some vinyls for review. Okay, this is the Manila Road wall here with original master tapes and all kind of rare stuff uh, uh, that's that's really the, the the towel that mark was using on his last show brian gave it to me and and here's his pick guitar pick it fell down i need to glue that a little that you can yeah, the, uh, it's not falling down what he played on that show at headbangers open air yeah here are some rare original photos that Mark gave me and didn't want it back for some reason. And of course they were scanned for the reissues. Here's, uh, it looks like shit, but it's the original uh, signed uh, press photo that Black Dragon sent to me uh, many years ago. And the funny thing is that it was on my wall with, oh shit, I don't know the word in English for that. Where you, oh, fuck. Uh, Tapetenkleister is the German word for that, and yeah, that's why it looks like hell. This is from our first meeting ever at Bang Your Head Festival in 2000. Mark wrote to Andy, <laughs> not, and not Noidy, and of course that's the blue crystal logic. Here is the master CD, which goes to the pressing plant for To Kill a King. Then we have lots of tapes here, Miller Studio, these are all tapes with uh, alternative mixes and uh, yeah, uh, rough mix for the band to check out if, if everything is cool and yeah, I I already uh, transferred all that on my computer and you you found some stuff already on reissues. Okay, here's the shark tape, <laughs> which is nothing else than Atlantis Rising uh, in a in an earlier version because uh, this was I think it was the plan to release it as the band Shark and besides some original cassettes we also have some from Phil's cassette label here uh, Postmortem Apocalypse that's not easy to say it sounds like Eucalyptus uh, so this is original Phil original uh, original 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 uh, Phil 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 <laughs> Yeah, and this is some some weird patch I got from Randy. Need to put that on my wall someday. I don't know why here's Jägermeister. Oh, that's Manila Road Jägermeister, yeah. We got that at one show. Here are more photos from Manila Road. Some of them you know because they are famous, but these are the originals. I have the originals here, I can't believe it. Okay, here is the master tape of Mystification. Here is uh, one of the master tapes or uh, alternative master tapes for the live album Roadkill. Here is some weird stuff. Here are two songs of uh, Mark of the Beast on that tape and some, uh, and some other stuff. Rehearsal room recordings and a radio interview that is not on that tape. <laughs> But uh, I think it looks great because it says Manila Road Radio Show. Yeah, that's the Manila Road wall. So we go over to here. Now it's getting a little more dark. This is the Shiba album. Uh, ah, fuck. What is the name of that? It doesn't say it. Uh, but okay, it's it's uh, the first Shiba album, uh, which is progressive new wave of British heavy metal, on I think heavy metal records. 
Uh, I really love that album, especially the song Wild Machine. That's really cool. Another Man of War. I, uh, I met these guys pretty often. Uh, yeah, Eric Adams is a nice guy and the other, uh, but just there's just some bass player that is not too cool. Yeah, then we have an artillery picture disc, 7 inch, uh, I think 99 when they came back with the album Back. And a Rods 7 inch with a missing piece here <laughs> because it once fell down. Uh, yeah, but still, it's an original. Okay, we go over. That's me in the window here. That's some girlfriend stuff. Not my fault. <laughs> like this here too. Oh no, this is great. Uh, I bought that with Josh, uh, who played bass uh, in Manila Road when we were in, I think in Porto, in Portugal, and we found this uh, artist uh, uh, doing all that kind of stuff with metal. So this is a spoon and so this is a spoon and a fork or something and she made a drummer out of it. You can't see it really good but it's uh, not too bad. Okay, we have... Okay, it goes on here with the Neat Records Crucifixion 7 inch. We're gonna take it or leave it. Yeah, an original one. I have two copies of that so I was able to put that in there. And here's a weird colored Witchfinder General uh, seven inch. I think music is uh, is the A side, but I prefer the last change. Uh, this one, which is on the B side. Here is more trespass for you. Uh, live it up. Another one. I have two copies of. And here we have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, unbelievable, but true. Mithra on Guardian Records. This is the not so in good shape copy and I have a good one in my collection but I really love that thing and I'm addicted to that Guardian Records logo, totally. Here we have a weird Marseille walking on a high wire. I have no clue if it was sold like that or it's silver or if it was just a promo but Marseille is an early new wave bridge heavy metal band. Some say they were even too early. I disagree, it's a new wave of British heavy metal. And then we have, a, I found that recently, yeah, not recently, but some years back in my Back with a Vengeance album from Fist, there was a list with uh, where you can order merchandise and this really cool press photo, which is uh, of, yeah, nearly poster size. And yeah, here we are, that's Fist, Fist, and Fist. And here is Fist. <laughs> this is the first single, name, rank and serial number. Again, two copies, so one is, is allowed to be here in the kitchen. Same with Mean Machine, another new wave bridge heavy metal thing by Buffalo on heavy metal records. Yeah, and I was really, really happy when Hollow Ground gave me this old photo and they signed it for me. That's Hollow Ground. And here we have uh, a CD that I got from uh, Jess Cox. It's an unreleased complete session at Impulse Studios in Newcastle. Yeah, the studio that was owned by Neat Records. And yeah, I, I think even on the reissue on High Roller, they didn't use many of these songs. Mostly it's the Guardian Records stuff that we all know. But this thing is at least 30 minutes or so, and the so songs are partially similar. But yeah, I got it on my computer, so I was able to add this great uh, CDR from Jess Cox to that picture frame here. Oh yes, that's from the second New Wave British Heavy Metal tribute show we did at Keep It True Festival. And I smashed a symbol th there. Still sorry for that, but I'm really happy. <laughs> because uh, most, I think nearly all of the guests, the originals, signed this symbol. And I'm pretty proud of Dennis Stratton here. But when I told him that I saw him with Kiss in uh, 1980, he wrote, best gig I've in, I've in, no, I've done in Germany since Kiss. That's what he wrote, and you know, so thank you. <laughs> here is some uh, Manila Road posters that are a little, little more artsy here. This is a show with Anguish and Harbinger in somewhere in the USA, and that's really cool. It's a, it's a, it's a great print even. 
you can uh, yeah it's it's not just cheap bullshit same with this one here with iron diamond and wretch this was i think hmm in the usa of course but oh yeah the fifth quarter launch i have no clue what this was where that was yeah and this was uh, one of the first uh, live evil festivals where we played with quartz niflheim and many many other cool bands okay so we we go to come to the end now it's uh, here we have blood feast uh, picture disc face fate metal massacre and here we have nasty savage indulgence which i really enjoy okay so the rest is tapes it's really hard because there is some girlfriend stuff here too <laughs> You, we can have a look at it. It's it's some are new like this here, some are not new like this. A winter Spain tape. Then we have the German band Devastate, Beyond the Dark. Right now I have no clue what it is. The original Lead Weight cassette, one of my favorites. Sabotage. The Dungeons are calling on uh, this Par Records. What's the name of that uh, thing here? Uh, yeah, another one that Mark Shelton gave to me. Tempest, one of my favorite new, uh, German metal bands from the 80s, going through strong still to this day. Here we have, unfortunately, without the the cover, Purgatory, Dr. Pain, the demo tape. Earlier, a local band called Arcus, uh, Shining, I have no clue what Shining was. Okay, everybody knows the legacy thing, then we have... Oh, oh, something fell down. Oh, that's not good. I killed the... The fork and drummer, I need to check that later. Killer Fox, I haven't heard that, uh, but now I have my tape deck in the living room, so I can do that very soon. A horrible band on uh, Metal Enterprises Records, but maybe this cassette is cool. I, another one that Mark gave to me. Here's the Whiplash demo, the original Thunderstruck, really great. Need to. Then we have Charlotte the Scalatina, I think it's another German band, the Heathen demo, Mystic, we all remember this, here's the original Destruction demo from back in the days, Phantom Warrior, I just put that on my computer because it's really great thrash metal, Creeping Death, one of my favorite progressive uh, Italian 80s bands, Totally underrated, and I know some some hate it, but I love it. I love this band really. Scandium, can't remember that one. Here's now it's getting even more progressive with Skeptic Zens. Then we have I think two Irish or Welsh uh, cassettes that I really need to check out. It's Omega and Christ, and for some reason they are they might be new wave of British heavy metal. Here is Slayer Divine Intervention Advanced Tape, uh, which has a different mix on it. Forte, the second album on Massacre Records. Uh, this was also Advanced, I think. Here's the Holy Terror album. Uh, I think it even has not all the songs, but this is how we press people got some our advances on tapes. Explorer, also from Massacre Records. Airwolf Insanity. He is, uh, inside here is a ring that uh, the singer from. Uh, uh, God damn. Okay, I will tell you later. Uh, Abraxas. Now here's some newer stuff. Here's Lunatic. Here's the Eddie Malm band, which is Newcastle. Well, that Chaplin is both old. Uh, right now I have no clue what this is. I need to check that out. And here's Hasenfurz which was my band in the eight, my fun band, What's Invisible and Smells Like a Rabbit. It's a Hasenfurz. Oh, you won't understand that. Shortcut, Barfly, <sighs> Red Race, and yeah, that's it. That was the dining room. I hope it was interesting.